My friends, today we have with us Mr. Joy D'Souza. Yes, you heard it right. Mr. Joy D'Souza, he's a legend. He's a stalwart uh, in the emceeing or comparing business. Uh, he's emceed innumerable shows, made the difference in innumerable uh, wedding occasion, uh, rows, and uh, as we all in our industry know him, he is the king of rows because he knows the traditions, he knows the detailing, he knows the nature of event, the rows is. It is an honor and our pleasure to have uh, Joy here who is going to go ahead and give us the typical details of the rose uh, ceremony. So uh, without much ado, I would want to call upon uh, Mr. Joy D'Souza who is going to help us uh, understand the significance of the rose and understand the steps that are involved in having the perfect rose ceremony. So Joy, thank you so much and over to you. Thank you Alistair. My name is Joy. And as Alistair said, of course, I am in this land, but calling me a legend gives me a little feathers in my cap. We are going to talk only on rose topic today. Change is inevitable. We are all aware of that. Change is induced for us for the betterment of our lives. Change has brought upon a rat race. But in this rat race, we have forgotten a lot of things. Though the fundamentals remain the same, we have forgotten the traditions, we have forgotten our culture. It's not that we have forgotten completely, it's basically we have forgotten how to implement the culture, the how to implement the traditions into the events that are there with us today. So today's topic, we are talking on rose itself. What is rose? We spell the rose as R-O-C-E. In fact, it is R. O S. Rose means juice. The actual term, the meaning of it is juice. It's an extract of the coconut fruit. The coconut is a fruit of the extract of the coconut fruit, which is pure white, is applied to the going to be the groom or the going to be bride just pre a wedding, pre their wedding day. In the olden times, we had the full function in a bundle, we used to call them mato, and the parents of the going to be groom or the going to be bride were known, were called them as yesman or yesmani. They are the ones who used to welcome the guests who were invited for this rose ceremony. They used to offer them water in a small copper pot, we used to call them chembu, and panpo, that is the beetle leaves and beetle nuts. We used to say, tumka saklang. Udak Anipanpur Aile means receive this as a gesture of our love and inviting you for here. And the guest is to reply Amka Paule means we have received it. And then they should sit down. In the modern tradition time which we are there, we have the compares who take the role of the host and welcome the guests that are there who are arrived on behalf of the Yesman and the Yesmani. Once this process is over, the introduction is over, we invite the going to be bride or the going to be groom up to the stage where it is built for them where we have mandals or the backdrops that are there next follows is a typical mangalorean style of voje basically if we make you to understand we indians long long ago we were farmers no we were not we are the fisher folks or we were farmers the farmers at those time what they used to do if there is a family that's going the daughters getting married the farmer used to tell what is the produce of his field, he used to give it in uh, as a gift. Basically that gift, one fellow will say, I'll give you the full rice. One fellow will say, I'll give you the goat. I'll say, give you some full plantain. You know, each one, vegetable, fruits, everything that was produced from their field was given to as a gift. And on one appointed day, that is the rose day, they used to come with band baja at that time. And, and that place all used to gather together cook that same food and serve. But we cannot do that tradition. So just in remembrance of that small tradition, we are going to have this event where we are going to come, we go, actually the word we call it is Oje. So we are going to have the uh, family members who are going to bring in the gifts in terms of farmers to the bride and the bride's family. After the OJ comes in, after that we invite one of the elders or from the house people 
to recite the prayers. We say the prayers and once the prayers are over, we make the going to be groom or the going to be bride stand and receive the blessings from the parents, the godparents, the maternal uncles, the aunties, the elders of the family and all those who are come there come and bless. At that part, once the blessing is over, we ask the going to be groom or the going to be bride to go for a change because when they had first been invited out there they were come in a beautiful attire dress and then they are going to be changed into something comfortable since the rose is going to be applied on over there when they are gone to change we have the ones who have bought produce of the field we have the cutting of the coconut breaking of the coconut out here as symbolic we have breaking of the koala which is here we break them out it's a symbolic way of showing that this is going to be the produce to be cut and cooked for to be served for everyone once this is over the uh, juice is extracted from the coconut and given that and kept ready for them to be bought along with once the bride and the groom makes an entry. Come and be seated at the table out there, the, the chairs that are kept for them. And then we have the main people selected for them, that is either their aunties, their moshis, to come with the rose in a bowl along with the coconut oil and place it on the table out there. Now this is kept out there with the crucifix also that is now playing a very important part sometimes we add little holy water in that and then we invite the, the obvious singers to come forward to start singing the obvious we have the mother of the groom or the mother of the bride standing there with the oil and with the uh, near the table where the rose has been the obvious basically a limericks lines sung in a way reminding the one who's going to get married of the obligation towards this house and towards the house that they're going to be joined with the limericks are also prayers invoking the blessings of the divine of jesus mother mary of all the saints and angels to come and bless the rose and the one who's going to get married out there so there it brings in a lot of sanctity rose is applied by each and every one of them it is to remind the purity of the marriage that they are going to wish and pray for the ones who are going to get married to. It may be symbolic but it is a deep commitment because for every time you apply the rose, that's why we invite everyone to apply the rose, every time we apply the rose, we pray upon them, telling them that your marriage is definitely going to be pure and sanctified and has the sanctity there is going to be blessed right, because the rose has been blessed next the oil oil also plays a very important part the oil where we, uh, the mother will apply it on the forehead in the ears on the throat on the chest oil is also very important it's like anointing usually in the olden times they should anoint the kings when they used to go there as a symbolic way of strengthening them. In our baptism, we are anointed with oil. This is strengthen our faith. Here, we are anointing the going to the ones who are going to get married with oil. To asking the Lord to strengthen their marriage is very, very much symbolic. Once the rose is over, then the singers and all make an announcement that the groom or the going to be bride is already. To go for the bath. Once the rose is over, we call in the people that is they are either the uncles for the groom or for the maushis for the going to be bride come and pick up the bride to take her for the bath. They go along with the bath and during the bath of course we have them pouring water on their head go and have the bath and they come back later on. With this the part of the ceremony gets over and of course the celebration begins thereafter. Now what is the main important thing out here is this tradition is very important. This tradition has the sanctity of the divine. We have to look at it as something purified. We have invoked the blessings of the divine on the rose. So it is very 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 essential for each and every one to remember not to defile it by throwing in eggs or pouring in beer or breaking in tomatoes which is very wrong practice followed in now modern tradition because we had to maintain the sanctity of the rose ceremony we have all forgotten this is one of the traditions that is been forgotten and along with this all this culture the rules the regulations are also thrown away bring it back let it not remain in the books of history but let's revive it any of the compares that are looking at this please please make it a mention right at the beginning of the rose that no one should throw any type of eggs or 
defile the rose ceremony in any manner it is duty of the host also to remind all of them to avoid doing all these things and with this of course the fun and frolic begins it's up to you folks that you enjoy yourself to the best because you have to make it a day for the going to be groom and going to be bride they have to remember this day throughout their life that the rose ceremony was in accordance with the tradition but it is also in accordance with the modern tradition too so enjoy yourselves and this is joy this is your friendly neighborhood compare thank you so much joy joy has been a mentor to both of us to Ankita as well as me he's been like a guide and I think so it is a privilege to have you Joy Thank on you. Uh, this video because there couldn't have been a better person to explain to us the significance of the rose ceremony so uh, my humble request is uh, for all your function and especially for the rose function he is the man so you have to call him up uh, we'll leave your his number here so you can go ahead and call well, him all up right, my friend, as usual, I am back here I was all this while I was quiet because I was really looking and admiring Joy because such a detailed video Joy thank you so yeah. much first of all Joy thank you so much for covering mm -hmm. each and every point and hey guys thank you so much for watching our video throughout you see and uh, yes do not forget to call Joy for all your ceremonies in fact you all can book like Three Joy. of us, yes. three yeah. of us together. So we, we come as a package as well. So don't you worry. And also, do not forget to comment below and like our video, share our video, and subscribe as well. Do not forget to spread the goodness. And more importantly, please, please ensure that he's given us the details of how to carry out the traditional Mangalorean rose. And it's up to you to carry on the tradition to become the flag bearers for the Manglori and the rich Manglorian tradition. So be the flag bearers and ensure that all the traditions are followed to the T. Uh, both Alistair and Ankita, they have been very, very generous in their praise for me. In fact, I must say, in today's modern generations, a modern traditions, a modern way of acting and carrying out events, they too are very, very good and very best too. So Thank you so much, George. I've heard a lot about them. And I'm so I wish both of you all the best. And at least I know that there is someone to follow me up. The Dissus are signing out. Uh, See you some other time, some other day, rocking as always. <laughs>